Recently, we've had updates about dress and grooming. We've talked about beards for brothers, slacks for sisters, and the use of jackets and ties for brothers. We're thankful that Jehovah trusts us in these matters. But some questions come up. Uh, first of all, do these adjustments about dress and grooming mean that we are lowering our standards? Not at all. Our worship of Jehovah deserves our deep respect and honor. These adjustments should not dilute the depth of our appreciation for serving Jehovah. More so, it's a recognition that styles change over time and that what's considered acceptable dignified dress for certain occasions also changes over time. The adjustments announced in recent updates acknowledge that. Another question that arises with this new direction is, how do we make sure that we still dignify Jehovah and His worship when it comes to beards, slacks, and not wearing ties? As is the case with all dress and grooming, there are a variety of styles. Let's consider three principles from God's Word. You know these principles and you love Jehovah. We know that they are important to you. So let's see how these verses can guide us when making decisions about our dress and grooming. First, let's consider 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10. It reads, Likewise, the women should adorn themselves in appropriate dress, with modesty and soundness of mind, not with styles of hair braiding and gold or pearls or very expensive clothing, but in the way that is proper for women professing devotion to God, namely through good works. From what we read in these verses, what should characterize our dress and grooming? Now, the world may choose clothing simply based on what's most comfortable, but as Christians, we have other things to consider. We profess devotion to God, as Christian men and women, we want our dress and grooming to glorify Jehovah. And so we choose styles that are appropriate, modest, and that reflect soundness of mind, especially when we go to the Kingdom Hall or in the ministry. But what do these terms mean? Let's consider some of the study notes on these verses. For the term appropriate, the study note explains it this way, or respectable. In this context, the Greek word used suggests dress that would be considered honorable and proper. Such attire would be suitable for one who professes to be a minister of God. If our clothes are revealing or tight, would that be appropriate, honorable, or proper? Would that be suitable to wear when worshiping Jehovah? I'm sure you would agree that it would not be appropriate. That means that we need to carefully evaluate what we will wear, especially when we are worshiping Jehovah. If our clothes are casual, would that be appropriate for us to wear when worshiping Jehovah at the meetings or when in the ministry? Well, no, that wouldn't be appropriate. Of course, I'm sure you would agree that what's considered appropriate also depends on the occasion. For example, there are clothes that are appropriate for when we go to the beach or on a picnic. And there are clothes that are appropriate for when we attend a wedding. And there are also clothes that are appropriate for when we go to worship at the Kingdom Hall or in the ministry. What's the point? All those styles change over time it's good for us to recognize that there are different levels of dress that should be decided based on the occasion. That's an idea we all want to keep in mind. Let's consider the next study note. What does it mean to dress with modesty? The study note says, in this context, modesty includes taking into consideration one's own conscience as well as the feelings or opinions of others. A modest Christian would avoid adornment that is considered indecent, that draws undue attention, or that is likely to offend or stumble others. 
So when making decisions, we consider how others would be affected, our brothers and sisters, as well as the community. Of course, we would not be displaying modesty if our style of dress or grooming was viewed as odd or extreme. We don't want to draw undue attention to ourselves or distract others by the way we dress or groom ourselves. We want all attention to go to Jehovah and the kingdom message that we proclaim. Let's consider the next study note. What does the term soundness of mind mean? The study note says it refers to good judgment, sensibleness. This quality helps us to avoid appearing sloppy or untidy. To illustrate, imagine you were invited to a formal reception with government officials. How would you dress? Would you wear your pajamas or something you would wear to the beach? Definitely not. We would want to dress in a way that showed respect for the occasion and for those present. How much more so when we worship Jehovah at the meetings or when we share in the ministry? Let's consider a second Bible principle. It's found at 2 Corinthians 6, 3 and 4. In no way are we giving any cause for stumbling so that no fault may be found with our ministry, but in every way we recommend ourselves as God's ministers. It's good for us to analyze how our dress and grooming will affect the way others view our ministry and the God we worship. After all, people may form an opinion of the truth, good or bad, based on our appearance. We can ask ourselves, in this part of the territory, would the neighbors view me as one of God's ministers if I dress or groom myself this way? Would they see the distinction between Jehovah's people and those who do not serve God? What's the third principle we'll consider? It's 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Do not love either the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Because everything in the world, the desire of the flesh and the desire of the eyes and the showy display of one's means of life does not originate with the Father, but originates with the world. Furthermore, the world is passing away, and so is its desire. But the one who does the will of God remains forever. From these verses, we're reminded that our dress and grooming should not reflect a love of the world. The styles change over the years, and there are a wide variety of styles that are not offensive to most people. Our publications have often stated that we should not be the first to adopt a new style or the last to abandon an old one. But we all know that there are many styles that we would never want to adopt, especially those that are immodest, sensual, careless, or sloppy. And to be honest, we need to consider not just the style of the garment, but also whether that garment fits in a modest way we would never want to show disrespect for Jehovah or His righteous standards. We've considered three Bible principles that can help us make good decisions about our dress. Of course, these same principles apply to hairstyles, beards, and to all the ways we dress and groom ourselves. They help us to determine the length and style of our hair. Brothers use them to determine how to groom their beards so that they look sharp and well cared for. And aren't we grateful that Jehovah has given us these principles in His Word? It's so good to review them in view of the recent adjustments. But what else should we do with these reminders? Pray about them. Ask Jehovah to help you see if any changes are needed. Ask a spiritually mature friend for honest comments and family heads Show your love for your wife and children by helping them to apply these principles. Brothers and sisters, we love and respect you very much. From the World Headquarters of Jehovah's Witnesses, this is JW Broadcasting.